Worcester College has always had a strong student theatrical tradition and they have their own theatre troupe here called the Buskins. Um, and uh, every year, at least once, they'll do a performance in the gardens. There was a legendary performance in the late 1940s, I think, where the students built concrete blocks up to the, just the under the surface of the lake. And then at a key moment in the tempest, Ariel ran away across the surface of the water. So that sense of an enchanted garden, that sense of theatre in the garden, that almost Shakespearean sense of, of the kind of magical transformed garden and the idea of theatre within it, is a powerful part of our sense of the character of the site. And one of the things we thought about is, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a, a space for performance or for lectures that could operate like a conventional theatre and be completely closed in and darkened? But if you wanted to, that you could open it out and it would feel as though the person who's giving a lecture here in this space might be as if standing under a tree in the corner of the garden, speaking out to a circle of people who are in the shade of that tree. So that sense of it being part of a garden landscape was very important to us. I mean, one detail of the building that was very interesting in the development um, was the, the bench that I'm sitting on here at the moment. And reasonably enough, um, the donor and the, the, the provost were asking, if someone's coming in here for a two and a half hour lecture, how are they going to survive on those hard wooden benches? So there was a great discussion involving furniture designers and furniture makers over a two year period where lots and lots of samples of these benches were made. And we all tried out the sort of bones of our bum on them to see how long we could survive without discomfort. And what's nice about it is that everybody was part of the conversation. The engineers, the furniture makers, the quantity surveyors, the college, the students, the donor. It's one of those tiny details of a building where everybody's got an extremely strong point of view about what, should it, what it should be like. The site that we were allocated um, had a combination, uh, a mixture of buildings. It was an old tennis court, and it felt, uh, when we came to it first, as though it was at, uh, at the far end of the college, a rather forgotten corner of the college. However, there was one really beautiful building nearby, which was Richard McCormack's uh, Sainsbury Building, which was built in the 1980s. And we felt it was a really distinctive 20th century building. And we could see that the way that he had left that building, as he had imagined that the spaces around it would be developed into perhaps a new center for the college. And so we felt that to some extent we were picking up a stitch from this uh, really interesting architect of a, of, 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 of a previous generation. And it's that thing that you're doing in places like Oxford all the time, of picking up stitches from earlier generations and feeling that you're a part of a continuity that you hope sometime in the future that the next person who comes along will take cues from something that you've done, and so the conversation is passed through the generations. <laughs>